Good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. My name is Robert. I'm grateful to have you watching wherever and whenever you're watching this episode. And as we get started, I've got a question for you, and obviously I can't see your answers, but I want you to be thinking, what's that topic that you'd rather avoid in conversation? Maybe for you, it has to do with kind of the, the, the logistical things. You don't want to talk about your age or your weight. Maybe that's something you'd rather just completely avoid in conversation altogether. Maybe you'd rather not admit how many coffees you drink in a day and that habit and how pervasive that may be. Maybe you'd rather not admit how much you spend on clothes or car parts or your favorite expenditure. Whatever it is, I feel like we all have those, those personal topics that we'd rather avoid in conversation and just brush off and keep moving. And they're different from person to person, but one thing I know that within the church, we have a common topic that frequently comes up and that is the topic of giving and money. People will frequently see, why does a church have to talk about money? Why do they have to talk about tithing and giving? Why can't they just talk about what the Bible talks about? And I love when that comes up because the Bible frequently talks about giving and money. In fact, that was one of the topics that Jesus spoke on most frequently when you look at the topics that he taught on because he understands that money impacts every area and, and segment of our life. And uh, as we think on this, um, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 16 uh, gives us this instruction. Paul's writing, he says, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I directed for the churches of Galatia, you are also to do this. He says this in verse 2. He says, On the first day of every week, each of you should put something aside and store it up, as he may prosper, so that there will be no collecting when I come. Now he's speaking to a specific uh, situation there to the church in Corinth, but for us, he's giving that instruction that we're to be regularly giving, regularly giving our finances towards the, the work of God in the local church. Now I, I need to, to un help you understand a few things, remind you of these things, clear the air of a few things. One, God doesn't need your money. Scripture says that God owns everything. He created everything and he owns everything. God isn't looking at his bank account balance, hoping that your tithe payment comes in on time for him to make the global rent payment. He doesn't need your money. Secondly, the church doesn't need your money. And you might be thinking, are you allowed to say that? Have you gotten permission to, to go on record? And the truth is, yes, I can say that because I know that, that the church is the bride of Christ and, and God is going to provide for the needs of churches worldwide. And it's not dependent on any single person's giving or generosity because God is going to provide for the needs that we have. So those two truths are there. God doesn't need your money. The church doesn't need your money. But the third truth is also there that you and I, all of us, need to give. So why is that? Well, scripturally, when we look at things, we, we see that the command to give and to tithe is connected to two things. First, to recognizing that all we have comes from God. As we give and are generous with our finances, it's us acknowledging, God, I know this came from you and, and I might have a plan for this 10% of my money, but I know that if I trust you, you're going to continue to provide. So we need to give as an act of trust and admittance that God is the author, God is the origin of all that we have. All of our blessings, all of our finances, everything we have is from God. And the second thing we see from scripture is that when we give, we grow our generosity muscle. See, I think that, that generosity is, is at the very heart of who God is. He is generous with giving his son to us. He is generous in giving us blessings. He is generous in offering us patience and forgiveness uh, on a continual basis. And he calls us to live with that same heart towards uh, the world around us. But we need practice in this. And that regular, you know, Paul says here, every, at the beginning of the week, on a weekly basis, we should be doing this so that we grow that muscle of generosity. So today, let me encourage you to honestly look at your life, even if this is an awkward topic, hopefully you haven't already shut off this video and moved on, but if you're still here, let me encourage you in a few things. Uh, and that's mostly to take that next step wherever you're at. Maybe you're like, I've never given to the church, I've never done that. Make your first one. Reach out and, and make that first step of faith and commitment saying, okay, God, I trust you. I'm going to give as you've called me to. Secondly, maybe you've done that a few times. Let me encourage you to, to, to take on what Paul has said here and to give regularly. For, for me and my family, that's every, uh, every payday. We do it uh, on that same day so that it's, it, it's consistent, so that it is connected with when we're acknowledging that God has given us these finances and so we're giving back. 
Maybe that's your next step of giving regularly. If you're already there, then let me encourage you to, to take the third step of saying, hey, I'm going to, to, to follow the biblical example of a 10% tithe. That, that is exactly what a tithe means, a 10%. So maybe that's your next step. And if you're already there, maybe the, the final step for you is looking for other ways to be generous above the tithe on things that, that God has made you passionate about and excited about uh, resourcing with the money that God has given you. But wherever you're at, I hope that this isn't an awkward conversation. I hope that this isn't something you want to avoid and not think about. But instead, I hope it's something that draws you closer to God as you think about being obedient and giving as you then acknowledge that it's only because of the generosity of God that we're called to do this and that we have the ability to. So I hope that you have a great day, Calvary. I hope that you take that next step and you realize just how much God has blessed you. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.